Was it you? Who did it? Who gave me a thumbs down in my stage three video? Who the f Uh, don't everybody give me a thumbs down to shits and giggles now because I will not find that amusing. Um, but, <clears throat> okay, um, well, I'm just going to get on with it. This is stage four now, okay? I'm, I'm going to do the decor, I'm going to do all the filling in. What I'm going to try and do in this video, or rather what I'm going to do in this video, is show you all the tricks which I picked up throughout the years. Different methods of using some things, because other things like decorators cork, for example, a lot of decorators cork if you fill a big void in, the stuff will shrink. Different materials and to make that last a long period of time. This doesn't always apply to everybody, but I personally find sometimes it's better when you're making a unit like this, instead of trying to get it spot on first time, you might have to do one main cut and then make it ever so slightly smaller and bring another cut. I had a bench saw so I can make it really close. But if you're doing it by hand, I will always suggest making your bit of wood slightly bigger than it needs to be. Because you can always plane or sand down your edge to it, till it's smooth, but you obviously you can't add on to it. So that's my tip too. Make your, for example, your front panel, if it's sitting on top of your side panel, make that overlip until it's secured and dry them obviously stabilised. Then at that point, you then get your plane and plane it flat. So I've got to do the rest of that now. Of course, if you can't be bothered to use a sanding pad, you can always cheat. See 120. See, look how smooth that is. More bricks, smoother it is. Tip number three, or four, can't remember, it's not important. With a corner that is facing within to the room, i.e. is protruding in, a lot of people when they install their skirts and will cut a 45 degree angle and then marry those two bits of skirting up. The problem is, if you've got a three year old like I have who keeps dragging his Henry Hoover around, it happens to hit quite a few corners, that corner will start to dent and to crumble especially if you're using MDF like I am. With my little trick, which I do is, I don't bother doing that 45 degree angle. I cut it butt edge. Now, by doing butt edge like this, you can actually rub down the corner to look like this. Now by having it like that, you're not actually relying on just a corner to strengthen the corner. You're relying on the actual thickness of the ball to give the corner strength. I've done the other way, it's actually in a couple of rooms upstairs and they've chipped. I've done the other ones in this manner downstairs and they've all seemed to be a lot stronger. So there's another tip for you. So I'm going to get on and shave these ones down. To get this to the desired shape, i.e. the same moulding as this edge, you'll need a couple of tools. You'll need a flat rough file, also known as a rasp, half moon, you might need a chisel. Probably not, but you will need that. So. Now you see, takes no time. Now I'm going to do the other. Right, so that stage is now done. The next stage is to fill nooks and crannies in. What a great word, nooks and crannies. There's so many different references. Now, you can use decorators cork on the wood, because obviously you've got to think about the expansion of the wood. But you can use poly filler, all depends how thick your wood is. I've done all mine out of 18 mil, so there shouldn't be all that much movement. So that's what I'm gonna do now, is go around and fill these holes in.
get it on there, whack it on, make sure that that stuff gets inside that joint, and then don't try to achieve the perfect finish at the beginning. Just simply, or I should say roughly, take it off bit by bit. And do not try to achieve the finish result on the first go. You won't achieve it. And if you do, the polyfiller may shrink. And then you've got to do all over again. And I'll be leaving it like that. Because when it dries, I'll then rub it down. That also applies in the corners, which I'll show you now. Now that the corking's done, we now got to paint it all. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. Some people like simply using a roller, roller. Some people like using a brush, brush. I like using both. Different methods, different applications. I like using a brush. I like the brush look. Some people don't like the brush look. Some people like the roller look. But for good coverage, I'll always say use the brush first because you get the paint on nice and thick. Hopefully you should be able to get the, it all depends on the weather conditions, bear in mind if it's a nice warm sunny day like it's today, you should be able to get your two good coats on there. But initially I always say use a brush because it applies it on thicker. Not massively thick, but nonetheless thicker. So therefore you get a much deeper coat or coverage. Where if you use the roller, it puts it on quite thin. And you probably might find you have to do three to four coats in comparison to the two coats to get a really good coverage. Nonetheless, you can still use the brush for your first initial coat, and then once that's dried for at least half an hour to an hour, you then go over with the, the roller. I like using the four inch roller. Some people like using the eight inch roller, which is obviously a lot bigger. But the eight inch roller wastes a lot more paint, in my opinion, when the four inch one doesn't. So nonetheless, that is what we are going to do. There's an argument amongst the scholars of the painting and decorating world. Some people will say it all depends on the quality of the paint, it doesn't matter what application you do. I use Dulux, I know it's a very good quality paint. But nonetheless, I still like doing a base coat. Now I always go with a base coat white. This will be the same colour as my wall. I can use the wall paint straight on this, but because of the MDF, it may absorb the paint quicker, it may make it dry quicker, so which that can change the depth of the colour. So I like always doing a base coat white because then that, sink, that sinks into the wood and seals the wood and then when you do your final coat on top of that it should stay the true colour of what it should be. Right, so the paint is all done now. Off camera, I've done a couple more coats on that, so I know that's a good white depth now. Now what I always do is, when you use a brush or roller, there's always some form of a rough texture on the wall or whatever you're painting. So I always recommend getting a little block wood. This is 120 grit, on the other side, I've got 80 grit. It's actually from a circular sander. Uh, and, but use the 120 grit and just ever so carefully, So you're not doing a full rub there, it's literally just rubbing over just to take the top coat off and it just makes it all nice and smooth. 
also at the same time any sort of overspills that you may have in the corners. <clears throat> you can just work those off and with a bit of luck, if you follow all these steps, when the uh, job is actually completed, it will look flawless. Right, here's another little trick for you, which you might find useful, is when you do your painting, obviously you've got to start from the uh, ceiling and bath, so that'll be your white. Don't worry too much about your cutting in at the top, also that applies to the bottom as well. As you can see here, what I've done, I've overspilled. The reason being for that is it makes life a lot easier. So don't worry about all your cutting, the air so careful getting that nice tight lip. And then doing the same with the wall, it's just best to take it over with the white, because that also, if you've got any imperfections along the edges, at any point, the white paint, you can actually work into it and actually seal those up. So it's actually quite handy to do that. So I'm now going to get my wall colour paint and start painting the unit here. Right, the painting's all done now. I think it looks great. I'm sure you guys think the same. As you see, I've done all the cutting in. The unit's all done. As you see, I've got a little metal piece which I've installed. I've done it off camera. I was going to film it, but I thought, I think you guys shouldn't really know how to make it, but I can actually give you a close up now. This is oak, which I actually got from an old bookshelf, which it is basically all rotted and falling pieces, so instead of throwing it away, I decided to use the, the wood. I actually built some windowsills out of the stuff as well, but this is from the same bookshelf. So as you can see, what I've done, I've actually cut a solid face plate, and then I've just sprayed the inside. Now the reason why I've done that is to actually make the unit lighter. Because as you can see, find the little string going into the back of it. That's my spring-loaded mechanism. Now inside there is a couple of pulleys and a big spring. So what that actually does, it holds the drawer up. Without it, obviously, it will, it will just drop forward. So that's my little mechanism, uh, which I made off camera along along with the front. So there, there we are. That's pretty much it. That's the end of stage four. Stay there is a stage five. Stage five is how to install laminate um, flooring. I'll show you a couple ways how not to install it. Obviously, not do the whole floor, but how not to install it, and then actually show you how to properly install it and do other tricks to get it done the best way possible. But. This, to me, looks wow. You pull it down, there's all your stuff, get in inside there, get your, your remotes, do what you need to do, bung them in there, close it up, never to be seen again. See you guys in the next video.